Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today I'm here with my friend Kleber who's behind the camera right now and also my friend Jonathan. And we're gonna be making a short commercial for his bike company. Today we're shooting on the Canon C70 with the DZO Pictor zooms. So right now on the C70, I've got the 20 to 55. And then on the C500, I've got the 50 to 125. So these are super 35 lenses. So they don't work with the full sensor coverage on the C500, but I put it in super 35 mode as well. So we're gonna be trying these out. I'm excited for them. And uh, DZO did send these out for review, but I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion on them. All right, so I'm here with my friend Jonathan Ball, who's a fixed gear freestyle rider. And we're about to get into it at the skate park. Let's do it. Let's do it. So one of the really cool things about these lenses is they've got a short enough focus throw where you could still work it on the zoom and the iris just kind of by hand if you wanted to. But they've also got these teeth so you can set them up for like a, a wireless follow focus, like a motorized follow focus. So that's kind of cool. And also they've got some nice weight to them. So for your handheld movement, kind of smooths things out. You don't get that real uh, small camera feel. So that's kind of a nice thing. How about if you just like, cause it's, it's like a bike commercial, right? So if you kind of put the bike sideways and you're kind of just like standing there, like portrait straight to the camera, you know? Yep. Cool. I'm, I'm going to get a few takes of this. So one of the cool things about these lenses. So you say so you got your shot right here, nice and wide since they're par focal, boom, you can punch in, get a nice tight and then you could zoom out without having to refocus and get a nice wide. It's kind of cool. Let's get a little closer one. All right, and eyes of the camera. Sick. Let's get a real close one. Action. Dope, that was cool. The light's coming through. Do you want to do something here? Could you? Yeah, yeah. Just because the light's so good right there. Okay, I, I don't have any. So one of the cool things about these lenses is because they're zooms when you're shooting things like sports. It's actually really nice just for kind of being agile. Yeah. Nice, dude. J Ball's a beast. Oh, that's a scary dude, one. That was dope, man. Thanks. So, like I mentioned earlier, these lenses are Super 35 lenses. So, with the full frame camera, like the C500 Mark II, um, they're not going to have full sensor coverage. But I just put this camera in Super 35 mode, and they still work great. And you can still run them with uh, wireless follow focus if you want. But right now, I'm going to be pulling off the barrel. And I'm using the 50 to 125. So this lens is cool. It's got a lot of nice compression and it's just got a really nice out of focus area. Let me get a little portrait shot of you with this sun flare in the back. Looking all handsome and stuff. All right, I'm gonna get a few tight ones on the bike real quick. So one thing I'll say about filming any action sports, skating, BMX, freestyle biking, whatever, it's a challenge if you're pulling your own focus. So um, I do have this set up with a uh, follow focus on here and we just happened to bump into Dave at the skate park, which is super cool. So maybe I'll ask him to pull for me on a couple of the shots, but I'd say uh, it's definitely a challenge if you haven't really done it before. So it's one of those things kind of practice makes perfect. I'm no expert necessarily, but I'm trying my best for getting it done. All right, so we're about to shoot basically an intro to the video, even though it's much later in the day. I thought it'd be a cool idea to have Dave follow J Ball and do like a tracking shot. So that is what we are going to do right now. So one of the things with cinema lenses is they don't typically have image stabilization or autofocus. So that means you're pulling off the barrel or you have a wireless follow focus. All right, here they go. So 
so like I was saying, they don't have image stabilization. So one of the little tricks that I do sometimes, if you're on an easy rig, is I'll take the sun hood and I'll, I'll use this as a third point of contact or a fourth point. So one, two, three is against the body, four is kind of against the head. So it kind of helps stable things out and you eliminate some of that shaky footage. So one thing I've been doing, I'm no expert on filming skating or biking or anything like that, but what I've been trying to do is just film different variations, wide, medium, tight. Uh, this lens has been really cool for that, the 20 to 55, it's kind of like your all around lens. And then what I've also been doing is mixing up the frame rates, 24, 60, 120. So kind of always something different with every time. All right guys, so we just finished up shooting at the skate park for like most of the action shots. We were shooting sunrise. So one of the things I like to do whenever we're shooting at a location, I like to look up just online, just on Google, what time sunrise, what time sunset. And I'll usually plan my shoot. If it's gonna be an outdoor shoot, I try to push to be more around sunset or sunrise, just cause you're getting better light. And typically one tip I have would be, anytime you're shooting sunrise or sunset, the look I prefer is if you can shoot where your subject is backlit. So that all that means, it's a complex way of just saying, the sun's behind your subject and you're kind of shooting towards the sun. So it kind of gives a little bit more of a cinematic look, if you will. And then one thing I'll try to do is, is I try to avoid having the actual sun in the shot. So you know, get those totally blown out highlights. I'll shoot kind of just off at one angle, just off at the other angle. So the sun's kind of just more on the edge of frame. That way you don't have that totally like blown out looking sky, which is kind of more of like an amateur look. So right now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna just set up for a quick little interview. We're gonna film a little bit of a voiceover of J-Ball, um, just kind of talking about his bike, talking about why he likes riding and all that kind of stuff. Let's do it. Maybe just up here on that bench could be cool. Yeah. I think, cause the trees will look kind of cool, like out of focus. Can I make it up this thing? Huh. Oh nope. <laughs> Second attempt. Yeah. <laughs> it's too sketchy with the C-stand, dude. <laughs> How do you like this monitor setup right here? <laughs> I took my big monitor off and put it on the C70 cause I was having a hard time seeing. So just using the, uh, it's always kind of a jimmy rig, if you will, in one way or another, but what are you gonna do? I did want to shoot on the 50 to 125. This lens is sick. I really like it a lot, actually. So what's cool about it are a lot of things, but the image kind of reminds me of like the cook lenses a lot. I know I think I said that already, but it really does. It's got just kind of a nice look that's different than most like Canon L glass or something. Hey, Clever, you mind grabbing one of those four by fours? Can you grab one of those four by fours and put the ultra bounce on? You know how to do that or no? Yeah. It's easy, it's like setting a tent up. Yeah. All right, so we got Clever flying in right now. We're about to set up for the interview. We got J-Ball here. We got our mic up top, boomed in on a C-stand. Lens we're on for this one is the 50 to 125. We're shooting on the C500. Basically, we just plugged in a monitor because I plugged in the main monitor on the other one. Clubber's just gonna, this is what we call Hollywooding, that six by right there. He's just gonna hold it for our interview. It's not gonna take very long. And we very much appreciate our main man, Clever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one tip I have, anytime you're in a noisy environment, you get a bunch of skaters around, you kinda wanna get that boom mic nice and close. I mean, that's only a couple inches away. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> And then what we're doing is we're pushing the light in from the far side of his face. But what we'll see on the camera is basically just an image of where you see the shadow side of his face. And it's because more light's coming in just from the right side of his face and the left side will be more in the shadows. So that's kind of more of a cinematic look, you could say. Riding bikes has always been my main passion since 2009, it's been like my life. I'm Jonathan Ball, AKA J Ball, and I'm a professional fixed gear rider. All right, so we're just gonna pick off a couple product shots. One of the cool things about these uh, DZO lenses is the minimum focus is pretty good. So on the 20 to 55, I think it's like two feet, so you can focus super close. So it's not a macro lens, but it'll get you pretty, pretty close. And then the 50 to 125, if you zoom all the way in, I think the minimum focus is, it is, let's see, 
two feet eight inches, pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a few nice detail shots, just kind of panning on the tripod. And these will cut well with the more like uh, fast paced, energetic cuts that we had earlier. Yep. J-Ball, dude, appreciate you, bro. Thanks, man. Clover, good Woo. job. Appreciate you as always. Finally get to be part of the Griffin Conway YouTube channel. Oh, dude, where can we find you on social? Uh, Say your socials. Uh, on Instagram at JBVLL. It's like J-Ball, but the A is a V. Cool, all right, bro, good job, man. Thanks, man. All right, guys, so that wraps it up for today. I was, uh, you know, I didn't shoot like a ton of BTS, but I think it was cool. Hopefully you guys picked up one or two small things, and I'm happy I got to try out these lenses. I do really like them a lot. The image from what I could tell so far, it does remind me a lot of like the Cook lenses. It's got some character, uh, but they're still clean enough where you could use them on pretty much all your projects. And I really like the mechanics. Some of the things I do like about them, um, they're par focal. They've got the standard um, cut, like focus rings and zoom rings. So when you're using it with your wireless follow focus, that works out great. And basically just mechanically, they feel really solid. And both the lenses in the set are about the same size, the 20 to 55, and then the 50, what is it, the 50 to 125. So makes a really good set. I'm stoked on them. Uh, I'm not gonna like, tell you guys to go buy them or anything. You can make your own decisions. I do like them though. One thing I'll say that's kind of hard about trying gear is you kind of always want to buy it after. So anyways, <laughs> that's, a, that's a different topic. But thanks for watching this video. Appreciate you guys. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.